What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a video on Arkaland, or Arkaland maybe. But at any rate, it is an indie RPG that recently released into Early Access a couple days ago from the time of this video. And as I was recently talking about interesting Early Access games, people brought up this one and asked me to take a look at it, so here we are. This particular title is meant to be a modern take on some classic games with a similar style, but this one blends a first-person exploration mode with tactical top-down combat. And while it is certainly an indie title, which means some of these systems are very rough, especially in its initial early access here, I do think it does a few things worth talking about. Now to set the stage a little bit, we play a group of adventurers exploring humanity's last frontier. A once expansive human empire used to control the place before being pushed out by some mystical horror, which divided that empire into four different kingdoms who had to flee the continent more or less. It has recently been rediscovered, and so all sorts of adventurers adventurers, etc. are going there to stake their claim, so to speak. Now, when you fire up a new game, you'll have the option of either creating a random party of four adventurers, or you can edit and craft these yourself if you want a specific party. You also select from a variety of difficulty modes, which will affect how things play out a little bit, via health, damage, and some general helpful features like restoring health after combat. Now, if you choose to actually make a character, you have some interesting options here, starting with your race. This particular game has a variety of races to choose from, such as well-known things like humans, goblins, or minotaurs, or more game-specific things like bat tracks, which seems to be like a frog person, more or less and a few other interesting takes. Once you've got that sorted out, you pick a career. They don't have all of these available in early access. And what's more, while this is available at the beginning of the game, a few levels in, you can actually pick from an advanced class, though that is also not ready for early access. This determines, of course, a host of combat statistics on top of what you're going to be able to get when you level up, which then leads to your traits. These are basically your ability scores, and then you pick your skills, which is all sorts of things that can come up via exploration or dialogue when you're tackling quests and the like. Now, once you've got your party sorted and everything, it turns out that your ship crashed on the way to the island. So you wake up on the beach basically naked and have to scrounge clothes and things and get it together pretty quickly. After what effectively serves as a small tutorial to get you going, you can then eventually make your way over to Port Galeb, which serves as the game's initial hub to get you questing and exploring. So let's talk about exploring a little bit. Exploring is done in first person mode. You can run around, find things to interact with, of course, find people to talk to, and this is done with their interaction mode, which for these old classic games basically means just bringing a cursor up onto the screen so you can maneuver it. And honestly, it's pretty much what you'd expect. But along the way, you might just run into enemies or be ambushed, which brings us to the combat. This is a pretty standard action point based turn based tactical system that is heavily reliant on your career or class abilities and magic that you'll get. So depending on how you built a character, what their career is, determines what they're capable of. And while that consists of the classics, of course, like my Minotaur that was able to use a two-handed weapon and hit things as hard as he can, I also had a Charmer, which is one of those Batrax people, which largely acted as a support caster. They could cast various spells to lock enemies down in combat, to keep them from taking their turns and myself getting overwhelmed. Overall, while I'd say this has the potential to be interesting depending on what they do with classes and abilities, right now it's a pretty basic bare bones combat system that I've seen many times and is pretty much what you would expect. Now, once you've engaged in enough combat, etc., you'll eventually level up your characters. And this is a little interesting because a lot of what your character gets on a level up is set in stone outside of a few specific decisions like occasionally getting to pick a talent talent or an ability, but for the most part everything goes up on its own. Besides, however, your skills and your magic. There's a variety of different skills and what you can raise, of course, depends on things like your class, but investing in these will give you all sorts of options to more practical things like picking the locks on chests or doors, to more non-combat oriented things like survival, crafting, lore, etc. These are going to help you in various dialogue checks when you interact with something such as, say, finding various plants that you may or may not be able to use, interesting objects just to discern their meaning, etc. And while a lot of that stuff is, again, pretty basic stuff, if it's refined through its early access period, I think it's got some potential to be something compelling. Now, for me, though, what stood out the most about my experience with this so far has simply been 
the initial sort of background plot where you're running up against all sorts of monsters and things that you might expect on an abandoned island or previously abandoned island, but there's also hints of something more sinister in the background, like the demon horn, they call it, that ultimately led to your ship crashing or sinking, which caused you to wash up on shore, to other implications of shady or darker goings-on with eldritch horrors of some kind. Long story short with this one, Arkelund is certainly an early access title. It's definitely early stages in quite a few different areas. You can see that from just this video, I'm sure. But it's got a few interesting premises, and I'm curious to see where they go with it. So while I would hold off on diving into this unless you're just super committed to seeing it through its early access period or something. Once this game fully launches, I'll probably take a second look at it and see if it's something I want to review, because so far it's a pretty neat indie title. That said, I do want to mention right here that, as you would expect with an early access title, it does have its fair share of bugs and the like, a few balance issues here and there, I would say. But with that said, that's pretty much going to do it for this particular video, so I certainly hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of this title, which of course means to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but regardless of any of that, that, truly. Just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.